Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from the Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the basics of the biological system. And in this context, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the cellular structures. So initially we discussed about the prokaryotic structures followed by the eukaryotic structures. And when we were discussing about the eukaryotic structures, we have also discussed about the uh, different types of organelles what are present in the eukaryotic cells and how you can be able to separate them with the help of different different types of fractionation techniques so we have discussed about the density gradient identification and as well as the uh, differential identifications and uh, in the previous uh, lectures we have also discussed about the cellular metabolism so we have discussed about the anabolic reactions and we also discussed about the catabolic reactions so within the catabolic reaction we discuss about the carbohydrate metabolisms and the lipid metabolisms whereas within the anabolic reactions we discuss about the synthesis of the different types of amino acids and so on so in today's lecture what we are going to do is we are going to discuss about the how the cell is utilizing this energy for different types of activities and one of such different uh, activity which is very crucial for the cell is the cell division and the cell cycle so i hope uh, you have uh, understood the how the flow cytometry is actually analyzing the different types of cells uh, and then you can actually be able to uh, you know exploit this particular technique not only for studying the cell cycle but also for the other kinds of applications uh, so these are the some of the classical flows and dye what you can actually use into the uh, flow cytometry. You can actually use the FITC, PE, PERCP, APC, Texas RED. You can actually use the PE Texas RED and PE sign in. And these are the emission wavelengths. So all most of these emission wavelengths are available in the uh, and they will actually going to give you the very clear cut, uh, uh, you know, separation from each other so that you can be able to use them either singly or in a combinations. So now come back to the our original question, how you can be able to use the flow cytometry to study the cell cycle analysis. So for the cell cycle analysis, what we have is we require to stain the cells for the DNA binding dye. So one of such DNA binding dye is the propodium iodide. So if you stain the cells with propodium iodide, so this is the propodium iodide structure, right? And it is actually going to stain the DNA by the, uh, you know, by using this uh, uh, positively charged residues, right? So the propodium iodide is a flow set dye frequently employed in the analysis of cell cycle to label the DNA. PI has a unique property of being unable to enter the life cell but capable of permeating the cell membrane of disease or the dyed cells through its ability to DNA and subsequent emission of red fluorescent upon excitation with a specific wavelength. PI enables the evaluation of individual cells DNA content and facilitate the examination of their distribution within the cell cycle. Remember that what we are supposed to study. We are supposed to study how which cell has the 2x amount of DNA and which cell has the 1x amount of DNA. Apart from that, it is also going to combine this information with the size and by using these two property, you can be able to study the whole cell cycle. Remember that G1 phase, the amount of DNA is going to be 1, 1x and size is also going to be small. Whereas S phase, you are going to have the 2x. Whereas G2 phase, you are going to have this bigger size and as well as the 2x amount of DNA. So that is a way in which you can be able to use the combination and you can be able to study the cell cycle using the. So uh, if you want to do the cell cycle analysis, these are the material what you require. So I am not going to go through with the uh, the content, right? So you require the well plate, appropriate amide, RNAs and all that. And uh, this is the protocol what you are going to do. So you take the cell in a six well plate. Uh, you on the day of experiment wash these cells and then treat the cell with desired concentration and incubate. So mostly people do the cell cycle analysis when they are doing the treatment. Right? For example, the cancer cell work. If they are under the treatment, their cell cycle may be get disregulated, and that's how they will actually going to undergo the apoptosis or cell death. So. For those kind of experiment, what you're going to do is you're going to treat the cells with a particular 
uh, anti cancer agents or compound and then you are going to study whether it is affecting the cell cycle or not so for example after the 24 of treatment remove the media and scrap the cell with the trypsin or 0.6 percent edta centrifuge at low rpm and discard supernatant using the trypsin and retain the cells as a pellet then you add the 250 microliter of ebs to resuspend the pelleted cell and keep the suspension on ice for a couple of minutes add 1 ml of 70 percent ethanol and under work test condition for the fixation of the cell transfer the sample from ice to minus 20 for three to four hours and then you are going to have the incubation with the 70 percent ethanol centrifuge at 5000 rpms discard supernet and then save the pellet then you add one ml of ice cold pbs and gently suspend the cell centrifuge the sample at 5000 rpm at four degree for 10 minutes to remove any residual media and debris remaining from the cell Repeat the washing step with the PBS two more times. After washing the cells with PBS, add the RNAs so that you are actually going to remove all the sample, all the RNA sac signal actually. Because the RNA signal is going to be very high because it is present in the cytosol. So you don't want that kind of disturbance, right? Uh, so with RNAs one, where the final condition would be 20 to 30 microgram and incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for in water bath for two hours. After RNA degradation by the RNAs A, stain the cells with proprodium iodide. Final concentration is 50 to 70 microgram for 30 minutes before acquiring the data in the flow cytometry. And uh, when you are doing the data acquisitions, uh, analyze the stained cell using the flow cytometer equipped with the appropriate filters for the proprodium iodide. Usually there is an excitation at 488 and the emission at the 585 nanometer. So you should utilize the uh, standard uh, flow cytometer where you can have the different this type of uh, lasers and uh, you know the detectors. Adjust the flow cytometer setting for appropriate flows and forward and side scattered. Run the stained cells on a flow cytometer. Collect the data for at least ten thousand events. So every event means the cell actually, right? So you have to collect ten thousand cells data. Analyze the acquired data using the flow cytometry software, plot the DNA content and onto the x-axis and the cell count or the event onto the y-axis. The resulting histogram will typically show the distinct peak in the different phases of the cell cycle such as G1, S and the G2. Data analysis, the data analysis can be done with the FCS5 Express software. Uh, these are the some of the precautions what you are supposed to take and to avoid any disruption in the distribution of cell population is recommended not to seed or treat the cells when they reach the confluency between 90 and 100. Uh, so you don't should not take a very old cell okay so it should be cells which are under the uh, actively dividing cells should not be like confluent -ish because that the cells are going to be old and they will not be dividing. Uh, to avoid obtaining unwanted background signal, it is important to run the cells labeled with the proprietary iodide in a PBS when using a flow cytometry instead of using the complete or the incomplete media. Ensure to avoid excessive pipe beating when scraping the cells from the plant because that is actually going to damage the cells. So uh, to explain you how to perform these and how you can be able to study the cell cycle using the flow cytometry, we have prepared a small demo. Uh, where I have, I will take you to the, my lab and where the students are actually going to explain you how you can be able to stain the cells, how you're going to acquire the sample and so on. Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about how to perform cell cycle analysis on a fax equipment. So basically, the cell cycle analysis gives us the details about how much population of a given number of cells is present in which phase of the cell cycle. For example, the G0 or the G1 phase, the synthesis phase or the G2 or M phase. So we can design the experiment according to our needs. For example, if we want to find out how a chemical compound inhibits a, uh, a certain population of cells, we can do a time dependent experiment or also uh, we can do a concentration dependent experiment. So uh, in both the ways we can find out uh, which particular phase of the cycle is being inhibited. The procedure for cell cycle analysis is very simple. Uh, first, we trypsinize the cells uh, from 100 mm cell culture dish and uh, uh, seed approximately 1 million cells in a 6-well plate. 
after the cells are seeded we uh, incubate it for 12 to 14 hours so that the cells get othered completely so that the cells get othered completely to the dish after the cells are othered uh, we give the appropriate treatment but after washing it twice with pbs so uh, after the appropriate amount of treatment let's say 12 hours or 24 hours or 48 hours we trypsinize the cells and collect the pellet we wash the pellet with uh, two times with pbs and then and then centrifuge again and then resuspend the pellet in 1 ml of 70% ethanol and then uh, this uh, mixture is kept in minus 20 degrees uh, for 12 hours for fixating the cells after the cells are fixed with 70% ethanol we wash the cells with 5 ml of PBS and then collect the pellet and resuspend the pellet in 1 ml of PBS then we then we provide the appropriate rna treatment to remove all the rna from the mixture because rna uh, if present in the mixture might uh, uh, interfere with our cell cycle analysis after uh, incubating the sample with rnas for 2 hours we give the appropriate uh, propidium iodide treatment the working concentration for propidium iodide in cell cycle analysis is 50, micro, 50 microgram per ml after uh, giving the treatment with propidium iodide for around uh, one hour, we analyze the cells in fax equipment. After the samples are prepared, we need to analyze the data in the fax equipment. So the first thing we do is the open the cell quest pro software. After that, we connect it to the cytometer. After connecting to the cytometer, we need few things such as counters, detector and amps, status, and also we need the dot blot plus acquisition and analysis. We need another dot blot for FL2A and SSC. Because in the FL2A channel, the propidium uh, iodide uh, uh, emits red fluorescence. We also need a histogram to see the cell cycle phases. Uh, uh, for that purpose, we need the FL2A channel. We need another dot blot in order to, to see whether and uh, there are presence of any doublets. But there is a chance that there might be a presence of the doublets uh, in the data, like uh, for example the clumps of cells. So we have to exclude that from the data. So for that purpose, we take the FL2 and FL2 FL2W channel. Now that everything is ready, now we can uh, change the directory. Uh, for acquiring the data we can also choose the file name so we'll name it as untreated one and we'll keep the file count to one for checking the data we have kept it on the setup so that we can see whether the data is coming properly or not and then we can remove it from the setup and then acquire the data So let's. Uh, uh, so now we are going to load the sample onto the sample injection port, and then press acquire. As we can see, that the number of events, uh, the events have started recording. In the FSC and the SSC plot, we can see that uh, most of the population is seen between the 200 and the 200 mark the population which is coming away from the uh, is that of the uh, doublets in FL2A and SSC we can see that there are three different popula populations uh, G1, S and G2 and in the FL2A and uh, the counts in which, which you can see that the longest peak is the G1 the, be the between one is the S and the smallest peak is the G2 so before acquiring the data uh, we have to set the number of events so we go to acquisition and storage and press uh, record 10,000 events 
so in order to record the data we have to remove it from the setup and then uh, set up and then press acquire in the fl2 and the fl2w channel we can see that uh, we can see uh, there are two different populations one is a thin line and other is the, the presence of some doublet or clumps of cells this detecting population might be presence of the uh, doublet cells or clumps of cells so while acquiring the data uh, we can see this but in the uh, fcs express software we can remove that so now that we have acquired the data now we can take the data from the uh, uh, tweeted sample uh, we have to remember that we don't have to change the parameter conditions uh, in order to uh, check the uh, co compare the untreated and the treated samples now we have to change the sample name from untreated to treated and also change the file count to 1 it's ok and then acquire we can see that there is a little shift uh, in the S and the G2 phase but we can say, f uh, say for sure that there is a change in the data so for that we have to acquire uh, we have to process the data on the FCS Express software in order to see what is the difference between the untreated and the treated sample so now we will remove it from the setup and then uh, acquire the data for the treated sample sometimes we can see that the events per second will be low so in order to uh, increase the events per second uh, we can uh, pause the recording and then uh, uh, tap the sample once or twice in a while to shake the sample and then the flow will be continuous again uh, the flow will be continuous again from the sample injection port and the events per second will increase now we can see that the event per second has increased because we have tapped the sample and the data acquisition will be a little bit faster. Now. So now we have acquired the data for the untreated and the treated samples. in order to see in which uh, cell cycle uh, phase of the cell cycle the arrest has take place so uh, we have to uh, process the data in the fcs express 5 software so uh, now that we have acquired the data on the fax equipment we have to now process the data in order to see the difference between the untreated and the treated sample for that purpose we use the fcs express flow 5 flow software uh, in order to process the data so for that purpose we use the new layout and then change the mode to landscape because it is easier to work in the landscape and then after that uh, we go to the data in the toolbar and press open and then go to the f uh, folder where our data is saved and press open the untreated file uh, as we can see that there are multiple options available a dot density color dot counter surface histogram and multi-cycle dna and kinetics for this we uh, cell cycle dna we only need multi-cycle uh, dna plot and the dot plot so we are going to open these two uh, because we have recorded our um, data on the fl2a channel and also because the propidium avid is only shown in the uh, fl2a channel we are going to open the fl2a channel so now after uh, we have uh, opened the dot plot and the cell cycle dna plot uh, we can uh, we can see the means uh, how much population of cells is represented by the g1 s and g2 by right clicking uh, on the plot 
and then selecting statistics and then show DNA cycle statistics. So a small window will appear in which it will show that the percentage G1, the percentage G2 and the percentage S. So this is for the untreated sample. Let's see for the treated sample. Uh, as we can see that uh, there is some change uh, in the untreated and the treated sample both in the both plots the dot plot and as well as the cell cycle plot so uh, in order to see uh, how much percentage uh, of the cell cycle phases have changed uh, we right click on the plot uh, then show DNA cycle statistics and then place it right beside the untreated one in order to compare so we can see that there has been a reduction in the G1 phase from 61 to 49 and from G2 also from 15 to 12 uh, but there has been an increase in the percentage S phase which has increased from 23 to 38 so we can say that there is a significant change in the phases of the cell cycle but we can only be sure after doing the experiment in the triplicate so that we get the proper standard deviation and also the standard error so this is one way of uh, processing the data. The another way of processing data is by gating. As we can see in the FSC and the SSC channel that there are uh, some debris near the 00, zero point and also there are some uh, population of cells which are very far from the 00, zero representing clumps of cell or maybe doublets which we have to take care uh, using gating technique. So for the for in order to explain the gating uh, I will use another page and then open the data. and then press OK. So uh, for getting uh, we need uh, multiple plots. Uh, the first one is FSC and SSC and the second one is between FL2A and SSC and the third one is between FL2A and FL2W. The fourth one is between FL2A and FL2H. And the last one is between FL2H and FL2W. So uh, we have to start the getting from the first plot, the FSC and the SSC. So in order to uh, do the gating, uh, we have to go to the gating uh, option in the toolbar and then we can choose any one like a, a ellipse or the rectangle, polygon, freeform. These are the shapes of the gating. So we'll go with the uh, polygon gating because it is easier to handle. And then uh, we can gate uh, our required population using uh, polygon gating tool and then just select the required population. So here we are excluding the debris and the uh, uh, like the clumps of cells which might be interfering with our actual data. And then we can select uh, what uh, col gate color we can give and also uh, re and rename the gate 1 to our particular type but we will go with the standard one and then press OK. And then uh, we have to apply this gating to the second plot. We can just drag and drop it on the second plot. So see we, we can see here that. Uh, we have excluded some population so but uh, still uh, there is some population which can still interfere with our data so we'll go do the getting again and then we'll exclude some more population which might not be helpful to us and then we'll uh, name this as gate 2 so uh, in order to uh, apply this one uh, this gate to the third plot just drag it and drop and then we can see that the, uh, uh, another number of population have reduced and in the third plot as well we can reduce this uh, population which is a little bit distinct from the singlet cells so we have taken uh, another gating using polygon and then we are only go now going to select the singlet cells and then we'll name this as gate 3 from from gate 3 onwards we just have to uh, apply the gates to the next plot and then we can apply the plot uh, we can apply the gate uh, to the plots using just by just selecting the plot and then going to the top left corner and then selecting the gate 
so uh, as we have seen that uh, we have reduced a significant number of population uh, and we have only selected the population which might be have helpful to process the data and then we finally we apply the gate 3 which is the final gate as uh, then you will see the change uh, in the uh, uh, cell cycle statistic plot So uh, this is for the untreated one. Uh, in order to show the cell cycle statistics, just press uh, statistics and then show DNA cycle statistics. Uh, as we can see in the ungated one, we have seen that the percentage of G1 was 61, whereas in the gated one it is 67.1. And the percentage D2 is 8.9 and the percentage S is 23. Similarly, uh, we can do for the treated one, but we don't have to follow the whole procedure. We can just uh, copy all the plots go to a new page and then press paste and then go to data and then select the treated one it will just replace all the plots with the treated data so but the treated data and the untreated data is little bit different so we just have to move the gate So uh, in order to see the cell cycle statistics for the treated one, we can select the statistics, DNA cycle statistics, and then we get the DNA cycle statistics. So in this way, we can uh, get the uh, process the data for the untreated and the treated sample in the cell cycle DNA statistics using gating as well as non-gating technique. So uh, hopefully uh, this video was helpful for everyone. So uh, at the end of this experiment, what we are going to do is, what you are going to see is, you are going to see all the cell cycle stages. You are going to see the G1, you are going to see the G2, you are going to see M, you are going to see the S phases. And all these are going to be analyzed by a flow cytometry analysis software. Uh, you can use any standard software what is available uh, into your laboratory, right? you are not bound to use only the FCS5 chapter and what will happen is that when you analyze that it is actually going to give you the different phases. So when you plot the FL2 versus the number of cells this is the untreated sample and this is the sample which has been treated with the anti-cancer compound. So what you see here is that this is the uh, G1 phase right this is the G2 phase and this is the uh, other phases right so what you see here is that this is going to be the G1 phase this is going to be the G2 by M phase and this is going to be the S phase right so what you see here is this this is the S phase okay these are the cells what are present in the S phase and these are the cells that are present in the G1 phase and these are the cells what are present you see this red color right these are the cells which are present in the G2 uh, by M phase. So, although the separation of the M phase from the G2 is very, very different because they both have the same amount of DNA and they also have the same size because at the end of the M phase, you are going to have the 1x of DNA, right? But before that, it is actually going to have the 2x of DNA. So, that is why it is very difficult to separate out the G2 by G2 phases, G2 phase from the M phase, but it will actually going to give you the idea, right? So this is the, uh, what it says is that in, out of the total number of cells, the 54% cells are under the G1 phase, 6.72% cells are in the G2 phase and only the 39% cells are under the G2 by G1 phase. What you see here, here also that S phase is actually the phase which is responsible for the DNA synthesis, right? And uh, what you see here is that the S phase is now 20%. This means there is a disturbance within the uh, S phase and that's how it is actually going to suppress the, uh, the growth of the cell, right? And these are the, some of the information what you are going to get when you are going to do the analysis of the facts analysis. Apart from the flow cytometry, you can also be able to do the traditional method where you can actually be able to, you know, prepare, a, you can take the plant tissue and you can actually be able to extract the chromosomes and you can actually be able to visualize the cells and you can be able to study the different types of phases 
using the uh, other methods. And in this, the advantage is that you can not only be able to study the G1, G2 and S phase, you can also be able to study different phases within the mitosis such as interphase, uh, uh, inner interphase, my metaphase, the telophase and anaphase. So this is what we are going to discuss now. So if you want to study the M phase, the uh, flow cytometry is not uh, good for studying the M phases, right? Or different uh, phases within the M phase. Okay, so for that we are actually going to prepare the chromosome samples, and it is actually going to give you the different sample. So uh, mitosis and meiosis, you are actually going to prepare the chromosome preparations. Okay. And that chromosome preparation can give you the clear idea about what are the different types of cells present in the mitosis and within the mitosis how many cells are present in the interphase, how many cells are present in the metaphase, anaphase and telophase. And for doing this what you require is you require a plant sample so you can actually be able to do this in a root tip right and you require a plant cell samples, you require the, if you want to study the same thing in the meiosis, then you require the flower beds, a flower bud, right, because flower bud is actually going to be actively divided by the meiotic phases, and then you require all this material. Apart from that, you require a compound microscope, and you also require a refrigerator for storing the prepared reagents. You also have to prepare the different types of dyes, such as the aceto or, or cetine dye, you also require the cornea solutions and so on. Uh, you require, so uh, how you're going to prepare all these solutions, this is all the recipe is already being given. And then you require the two different types of methods. So you can actually be able to prepare the mitotic chromosome preparations. So mitotic chromosome preparation, this is the lengthy procedure and we are actually going to, uh, you know, so these are the method what you are actually going to follow so this is the protocol if you follow this step by step it is actually going to give you the chromosome preparations okay and that and then uh, apart from that if you want to study the meiosis uh, you can actually be able to prepare the chromosome preparation in a different way okay? you are actually going to use the flower buds if you want to study the meiosis uh, whereas if you want to study the mitosis you are actually going to use the root tips or the somatic tissues and at the end of this uh, what you are going to do is you are going to prepare you are going to uh, take some precautions such as you are going to use the collect the plant material which is uh, you know which is which should be performed in a bright sunny day to ensure the proper mitotic stage of the development although collection timing may vary depend in between the plants cloudy rainy should be avoided for the material collection and use of the freshly prepared solution of the acetor or seed solution should be used during the preparation of the slides. So uh, I have prepared a small demo clip uh, into uh, one of my colleagues lab and uh, there the students are actually going to show you how you can be able to prepare the chromosomal preps for studying the mitosis and meiosis. Hello everyone, I am Rajendra, PhD student from IIT Guwahati. In this tutorial, I am going to demonstrate you the practical aspects of mitosis cell division. In this method, we will explain you each and every details of mitosis, starting from sample preparations to the microscopic observation. We will explain you each and every details. In today's demonstration, somatic chromosomes will be studied from onion root tips for mitosis and flower buds will be used for meiosis studies. Various chemicals and materials will be required such as 0.02% 8-hydroxyquinoline, carnois solution, glacial acetic acid 45%, 1 normal hydrochloric acid 2% acetoarsine, wash glass, cover slip and cover glass, burner, glass beaker, pipettes, various size of the forceps, blades, filter papers or the blotting sheets and ependop. Root tips from healthy onion plants were collected at 9 am in morning. Initially, apical region of the root tips were cut by using sharp blade. 
टू टू थ्री पीसेस ऑफ रूट टिप्स वन सेंटीमीटर इन लेंथ वेर सिलेक्टेड एट हाइड्रोक्सी क्विनोलिन जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू परसेंट वेर प्रिवियसली प्रिपेयर एंड केप्ट इन एम्बर ग्लास बॉटल वन एम एल ऑफ एट एच क्यू प्रिवियसली केप्ट इन एपेंडॉप ट्यूब्स वेर यूज एंड दो कार्टेड रूट टिप्स वेर केप्ट इन साइड दैट एपेंडॉप ट्यूब After that, this ऑफ tube will be stored in refrigerator at फोर degree Celsius temperature for फोर hours. This whole process is called pretreatment. After फोर hours of pretreatment at फोर degree Celsius temperature. The eight hydroxy quinoline has been discarded. Therefore, the pre-treated root tips now will be fixed in Carnot's solution. Carnot's solution containing absolute alcohol, chloroform, and glacial acetic acid at six is to three is to one ratio. The end of tube containing one mL of Carnot's solutions with pretreated roots tips now will be stored at room temperature for 48 hours. After fixation in Carnot's solution for 48 hours, that solution has been removed. therefore that fixed root tips has been transferred in wash glass followed by addition of one normal hydrochloric acid one drop and 2% aceto orsin the mixture of acetoorsin and hydrochloric acid has been heated gently over the burner this process is called staining now the stained root tips has been placed over the glass slide lower portion of the root tips has been removed by sharp blade only the meristematic region has been taken for analysis root tips were then squashed and mounted by cover slip this process is very careful to prevent entering of air bubbles now the sample was covered by the filter paper and gradual pressure has been applied by fingers in order to spread out the cells now the slide is ready for observation under microscope now the slide has been placed under microscope photomicrographs were taken 
with Carl Zeiss microscope having 10x, 20x, 40x, 60x objective lenses. We can see here from the microscopic field that chromosomes of onion root tip cells is clearly visible. Along with cell divisional stages like anaphages and telophase also visible. In this method, we have explained each and every steps of mitosis, starting from sample preparations to the microscopic observations. Hope this video will help you to prepare the slide of any plant sample for the study of mitosis. The meiotic cell division process Starting from sample preparation to the microscopic observation, we will explain you each and every steps in detail. Flower buds of onions will be used for meiosis study. Initially, flower buds were collected during the flowering season in morning between 11 to 11.30 am and has been fixed in Carnois solution containing absolute alcohol, chloroform and glacial acetic acid 6 is to 3 is to 1 ratio. Those fixed sample has been placed over a watch glass and a single flower bud has been selected for smear process. Flower buds size 1 mm in length has been taken and placed over a surface of glass slide. After that, sepals and petals were removed initially from that selected flower buds. Therefore, the anthers were removed. Single isolated anthers are clearly visible on the surface of glass slide. One drop of 2% acetoarsine has been given over the anthers. With the help of iron needle, the anthers were ruptured and pollen mother cell has been released. Very gentle pressures has been applied over the anthers. This process is called smear technique. Now the anther walls has been removed. So that we can observe the various stages of pollen mother cells that is undergoing meiosis. After that, one cover slip has been placed over the sample with the help of pointed iron needle. This process needs extra precautions to prevent the entry of any air bubbles in between slide and cover slips.
we can use blotting sheet or filter paper to remove excess stains now the slide is ready for microscopic observation after that the slide has been placed under microscopes to capture photomicrographs different objective lenses has been used such as 10x 20x 40x and 60x for capturing the various stages of meiotic cell division here we can see some earlier stages of pollen mother cell in this image we can see after second meiotic division two cell stages is formed uh, but the four distinct nuclei has been reached in two different poles in this process we have explained each and every steps of meiosis cell division process starting from sample preparations to the microscopic observations hope these videos will helps you to prepare the slides from any flower buds in your plant sample thank you for listening so this is all about the cell cycle and uh, let's discuss about what is the role of cell cycle into the different uh, properties or different uh, section of the uh, biological function of the cell so the role of cell cycle uh, is actually required for the development of the growth so the development of cell cycle a single cell into the multicellular system is possible due to the cell cycle and division then it also require for the cell replacement so eukaryotic cells have the predefined life span after that period it needs to be replaced with the new one it is possible due to cell division and ma making more cellular properties for example the human rbc has a life span of 3 months new rbcs are formed from the bone marrow by the cell division then it also require for the regeneration so cellular damage and injury is the integral part of the living system and the cell division is the primary event required for the synthesis of the lost or the damaged organ then it is a very very important method for the asexual reproduction so asexual reproduction is common in the lower invertebrates such as and in these organisms the cell divide to form the new cells and these newly formed cells give rise to the new organism for example hydra right or planaria or amoeba right now uh, the last part is that how you are actually going to control the cell cycle because if if it is a cell division it actually increases the cell mass it has to be very precisely controlled right so cell cycle is controlled at the multiple stages it is actually going to be controlled at the interface of the g1 to s phase it is going to be controlled as the s to g2 phase and also going to be controlled at the g2 to m phase and all that so every stage when the cell is entering into the g1 phase it is going to be checked for different types of parameters so that it should not uh, happen spontaneously right so cell cycle at different step is tightly controlled by the cell cycle check proteins the cell cycle check proteins are used to ensure the completion of different steps and repair of the dna damage the main checkpoints are present at the g1 to s phase g2 to m phase and the m phase each checkpoint is controlled by the mutual interaction between the cyclin protein and the cyclin dependent protein kinase or cdks p53 protein are known to control many events through the g1 s and g2 m checkpoints so what will happen if there will be a dysregulation or there will be a control gone right so what will happen if these events goes wrong right dysregulation of the cell cycle and control mechanism give rise to the enormous growth of that particular cell and that is nothing but the tumor actually after certain number of cell division every cell will enter into the g0 phase and ceases its cell division in the case of tumors 
cells lost the control mechanism and multiply indefinitely to give rise to the cell mass. These cells are taking nutrition but not performing the functions. Uh, retinoblastoma or the RB proteins, P53 are the crucial factor, cellular factor responsible for the cell cycle control and play crucial role into the tumor development. If you want to study more or if you want to study more about the cell cycle control, I have given you this reference and you can be able to study or you can actually be able to go through with the content. So uh, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the cell cycle and control. We have discussed about the different phases of the cell cycle, whether it is G1 phase, G2 phase, M and S phase. And we also discussed about the relevance of these phases. Apart from that, we have discussed about the two different methods. One is the traditional method where you are actually going to prepare the chromosomal preps to study the uh, mitotic phases. And the other is the more advanced technique of the flow cytometry where you can actually be able to separate the uh, cells based on the DNA content as the size. And both of these techniques are going to be very robust to study the cell cycle and the different phases of the cell cycle. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to study or we are going to discuss some more aspects related to the biological system. Thank you. Thank you.